In today's episode of the Aussie Flipper, I open up about my biggest frustrations as an eBay seller. I would say that that is 100% my biggest frustration when it comes to selling on eBay. We dive into the thrift to find some items to sell for a profit. I thought these are really nice as well. We've got some NBA All-Star basketball shorts here. And after a weekend trip to Melbourne, I find myself rushing to get the Monday post orders out the door. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. There's one more. There it is. Nice one. It's gonna be a long video, so grab yourself some items to list while you watch, and let me know in the comments how many items you're able to get through. Okay, so first strike of the day, the Adidas NMD R1 V2 men's running shoes. Interestingly enough, they are my size, and I did like the look of them, so maybe I could keep them on my feet for a little bit before they sell. Actually, I won't do that because they are almost in light new condition on those soles. They are in really great nick, which means we should be able to get a good sale price for them. Now, I had a bit of a look into the research when I was in store. Even though they were only $6, I still wanted to do my research to know what I was going to go home and list them up for. And I had a look to see the sell-through rate. There were 13 available for sale on eBay. And then I had a look at the sales and then there were 10 sales. So it wasn't quite a like-for-like like sell-through rate, 100% sell-through rate, but it was pretty close. Uh, that's a sell-through rate I'm, I'm excited about. So I'm gonna go ahead and list them up for about $60. And being in great condition with the size 12, I think we might be able to get that full asking price of 60 bucks. And based on the sell-through rate, we should be able to see our money back soon. to do some thrifting and I've been able to find this one here to kick off the day. We've got Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Now this one interested me but there were 80 sales but have a look at this. 1,000 listings up for grabs of this book series. I was shocked by that. Only an 8% sell through rate. So I didn't even bother looking into the prices. I just left it behind right there and then. I found these though. These are the Nike Air Max 97s. A pretty decent pair of shoes. If we have a look at the numbers here around this, you've got about 100 odd sales and then you've got 71 sold items. So the sell through rate obviously being much better. The wear though was a little bit concerning there as you can see. So um, I'm, pe I'm picking these up for $20. I think the resale value is gonna be more like $60 to get the sale, but a size 10 definitely does help. But the Nike Air Max 97s, I definitely think that's a shoe you guys should be buying. Um, I've also got these as well. These are the big freeze beanies, some numbers around these ones. Well, the sell through rate is actually pretty strong. Um, you've almost got the same amount of listings as you do sold items, which is always a great sign. You do need the full collection, not just the six and seven that we've got here. Um, so I did leave the beanies behind, but that's one to look out for, for sure. I thought these are really nice as well. We've got some NBA all-star basketball shorts here. Um, these are completely genuine as well, which I love, obviously, the fact that they are because we can sell them quite confidently on eBay. Um, it's a hardwood classics. These are standard bread and butter sort of winners for me. I should be able to list this up for about $35. Uh, and I reckon I'm going to be able to get it as well. So very good condition, no marks, no tears, exactly what you want to be finding. I've grabbed these as well for another $8 purchase price. These are the Steph Curry basketball shorts. He's partnered with Under Armour. Um, these are a size medium and they were $8, so I had to say yes. These were slightly more expensive, some track pants for $15, but this is Giannis Anadokupo. He's a basketball player over in the NBA. He's a size large. I just thought that unfortunately the, uh, the average sale price wasn't enough to make a profit. Um, really good brand of pants here, new. Uh, I didn't end up buying these, but I just thought I'd put it into the video to help you guys out with a really nice brand to find to make some decent money on. Um, you could probably flip these ones into about $45, but just on this occasion, I chose to leave it behind. Um, this was a really fascinating find. I'd arguably say the first that I've ever found before. It's a triathlete, elite um, triathlete suit, wetsuit. Um, it's a women's size small. Uh, I did some research and I found some comps over in the UK. Um, selling for about 315 pounds and I did some conversions and that means it's a $600 wetsuit. Um, super rare it seems in the sense of you know how much it costs. Um, but then I had a look on eBay and I couldn't see any comps and then I saw this on the shoulder and there seemed to be some holes in it. I didn't know if water would get into it and deem it to be not worth anything. So I actually left it behind. They were charging $35 in store. Have a look at all of these DVDs. I've done a lot of research in the DVD shelf and I've pulled out all of these great titles. Check it out. I've got The Good Wife, every single episode, $49 there on that one. Um, I've also got Blue Bloods. This is just a part 
season set, season one to six. We should get around about $50 for that. In plain sight as well, that was going for about 60, but I've only got three seasons, so I'm going to anticipate about $30. Uh, this one, the Shield, season one to seven, we should be able to get about 40 bucks for that, but it will need to go into a medium satchel. Uh, Lie to me was only three seasons worth, a pretty standard $30. I always love to get that $30 sale price for three DVDs. Just a very simple bread and butter sale. Um, I've got Hawaii 5 season one to five. This will be a part season set that we should be able to get about $40 for. And then I've also got this one as well, probably the best one that we have. Every single episode of CSI, and it's $180 on eBay. So that's an absolute banger. But also, we've got NCIS to round it out. So seasons 1 to 11, I should be able to get about $80 for that collection right there. Um, so all in all, bit of digging in the thrift. We've been able to pull away all of these DVDs. It was, well, a pretty insane bundle. I definitely think you guys should be looking for your DVDs. There's a lot of money in the category. <coughs> So fortunately, I have been able to come away with the full purchase of every single one of these DVD sets. Uh, a great collect. I went up to the counter and I asked the store manager how much it was going to be because there were no price tags on any of these DVDs. And she said to me it was going to be a dollar a disc. And I said, oh, this could be quite pricey because every single one of these DVDs I have are about four to six discs per DVD. So it's going it to be a lot. CSI was just going to be $100 on its own. And I really don't think there's a customer out there that's going to walk into that thrift store and buy CSI for $100. Um, so I, I sort of explained it to her. I said, the two red uh, baskets that I've got here are going to be about $300 worth of a, a purchase. And I, I don't think I'm willing to <laughs> obviously make that purchase. And she said, yeah, no, that's actually pretty fair. Considering you're buying so many, how about we do $100 then uh, for the lot? And oh, look, I knew CSI was going to be 180 so that was my mentality. Um, 180 for CSI, take fees and post, it might bring it down to that $100 of my money back. Uh, and then every other one of those DVD sets is going to be pure profit. I've been thinking long and hard recently as well about what I want my eBay store to look like moving forward. Uh, now that we're focusing so much on just quality stock only, we know exactly what we're looking for when we're out in thrift stores and how to look for it as well. Um, I think ideally for me it would be a 1,000 item store. Uh, right now we've got, I think it's 1,196 items to be exact. Uh, so I actually have a bit of a mission to cull or at least group up video games to get them gone in bulk bundles and all that sort of stuff that we do. I want to whittle the store down to at least 1,000 items and then try and maintain a 1,000 item store until we can grow from 8 sales a day to 10 sales a day. Um, and then that's the perfect, you know, one sale for every hundred active listings. And I think it should be a goal for all of you guys out there as well, right? Like if you've got a one, a 100 item store, a 500 item store, you should be getting at least one sale or five sales every single day, depending on that, that ratio. Um, and also have a look at your other metrics, like is your average sale price a good number? There's all the diff different things that you can really kind of hone in on. And that's what I do with these store reviews when I'm, I'm doing these mentoring sessions. I'm looking at the numbers around your store and I can very quickly see whether or not you're doing well or not. Uh, and when you're first starting out, the good news is that we can get you off on the right foot by teaching your sell-through rate, average sale price, you know, what you should be saying yes and no to when you're out there sourcing. So, you know, have a look at your own store. Be very analytical around the numbers of your own store. And if you don't know how to do that, obviously get in touch with me and I can help you out with that. So anyway, just some, just some thoughts that I've got around what we're going to be doing with our store from here. And... Uh, yeah, I think it's a pretty good plan of attack for moving forward. Had a big weekend in Melbourne catching up with my girlfriend's parents and family for, well, in some cases, the very first time. It was a pretty important weekend to say hello and uh, go to a first birthday party as well for Kate's nephew, but uh, yeah, a lot of fun. We actually got to spend a, bit, a little bit of extra time in Melbourne given the fact that our flights were cancelled with Jetstar on two hours notice. So luckily Kate's mum and dad stepped in and basically turned into tour guides showing us all around the Melbourne city and uh, we even went to a few really cool rooftop bars that I wasn't able to check out back when I used to live here. Uh, it was really nice to get back, I do miss the place and uh, yeah, it was actually nice to get away from eBay for just a second, however, it was on my mind and we still had plenty of work to do. We're finally back home from Melbourne, a very, very big weekend, a longer weekend than I anticipated. I'm just here at the moment at my desk, which is actually in my room, I don't really document too much in here. 
I edit in here, um, but I'm using the big screen just to analyze the numbers from over the weekend. And unfortunately, we've only done $725 worth of sales that I'm going to be putting into the mailbag in the next couple of hours. I'm pretty stressed about the fact that this has to be done in the next two hours. Um, so I'm going to run downstairs and do that in just a second. But $725, it's a 30% decrease in overall sales compared to, well, the prior three-day sales period of 27 to 29. But the fact that we've dropped by 30% doesn't shock me um, because basically today and yesterday, uh, sorry, no, Saturday and Sunday, I didn't have any active listings going up. We just got to Friday and I just ran out of time to schedule listings to go live for, uh, for over the weekend when I was going to be away. Um, coupled with that to the fact that it's now two o'clock in the afternoon uh, on a Monday and we still haven't had any active listings go up today. So it's been two and a half days worth of very limited new listing activity. So to be down 30%, I'm not really surprised by that at all. Um, we've only had 19 sales come through over a three-day period. So uh, well below what we normally do. And that's, to be honest with you guys, I would say that that is 100% my biggest frustration when it comes to selling on eBay. You really do feel like you're on a hamster wheel um, with this job. There's no automation. There's no things get done without you needing to put in the work. If you want the sales results with eBay, you kind of have to be there putting in the work at all times, every single day, or at least if you're not doing it every single day, you've been able to schedule things out so you can almost afford to have time off. Um, it's when you don't schedule things out ahead of time and then have time off, just like I did over the weekend, um, that you immediately suffer. I really wish eBay could put something in place where they just give you some time off um, without sales being impacted, that would be lovely. I would love to be able to go away for a weekend away like I've just done for two days and not be impacted with a 30% reduction in sales. I'd love to just come back and uh, ultimately like a, maybe a timeline of a week before the algorithm starts to whack you. Um, the fact that you go away and literally get whacked instantly the day you don't list up is really, really frustrating and annoying as an eBay seller definitely my biggest frustration and let me know in the comments if you think that that is the way that it works for you as well that if you don't list up on a certain day um, you know sales start to drop because I see it instantly and I really don't like it at all um, but enough rambling I've got to go and get all of this shipping done there are 20 odd odd sales uh, to put into the mailbag I want to take you through each and every one uh, including actually some uh, I guess some useful information for you guys um, around a little step that I did uh, just before I went away that's had some great success. So let's kick it off with that. Now, you may be noticing that this shelf is actually a whole lot lighter than it usually is. We've got quite a few gaps in here. It's because I've been going ahead and condensing and being really ruthless around what the actual true market value is of these video games. I'm actually working over here on some Xbox 360 games. So it is still a bit of a work in progress. I've still got to do this column of Wii games, some DS, and then I've got to go through all of this bottom shelf here as well. And I'm just checking eBay to see what the actual average sale price is over the last 90 days. And all of these games here on this shelf have been able to come in at least a $20 average sale price based on exact current market day price points. But I think all of this can be looked at. I think we can go through all of the books. We can go through all of the DVD box sets. And as you'll see, a few of the sales have come through the work that we did last week. So let's get into the first one. It is a PlayStation 3 game. And the first one is Skate number three. So let me try and find this one. Skate three. So this one here, we're going to put into an envelope. I've already looked out a few that I wasn't able to get off to the post on Friday. Reason why this stuff didn't actually go to the post office was because it was a public holiday um, for us on Friday. So couldn't get it out the door, but I will this afternoon. Um, there it is there, Skate three. That one sold for a grand total of $19. So 19 bucks originally would have, would have had this game listed up for over 20, uh, but we dropped the price to a market value, which is around that $19 price point, And we got the sale. I'm gonna stay with the video games here. And I've got this one right here, Outrun number two. Um, fun fact around this, Outrun, um, can't remember the exact title of Outrun, but Outrun on the Xbox can sell for hundreds and hundreds of dollars if you get a certain copy. Unfortunately, it's not the copy that I have here, but I'll put it on screen for you guys just to have a bit of awareness on. Oh, it's actually over here. This is the list of games that I've got in the Xbox and Xbox 360 that I still have to go through, and there it is right there, outrun number two. Uh, so yeah, this game ended up selling for $42.75. I haven't actually done a price drop yet on all of this stack, so 
Um, this one went for whatever we had it up for initially. So that's good to see. Uh, again, no different. We're going to put it into a tractor uh, medium post envelope. So there's the second game. Just have to go outside for this next one. And we've got a lot of roadworks going on out the front of my street, as you can see there. Heavy, heavy earthwork. So apologies if it is a little bit distorted out here from an audio perspective. I'll close the garage door in just a second. Um, I'm in this tub down here uh, for DVDs. We've just had the shield, which is right here, go on to sell. So this is the complete series of the shield. Uh, we've got season one to seven. And I believe, I'll have to put this comp up on screen to show you guys, but I think we got a 40 odd dollar sale price for that, um, which isn't too bad. They will go into a medium satchel for about 10 to $12 worth of postage. Um, it's a big heavy tub there. Big heavy tub of DVDs, that one. Um, but yeah, very happy with that um, because we would have only paid a dollar a piece. So seven into 42 with $12 in shipment, that'll be a pretty decent uh, pretty decent profit. All of these um, tubs here are DVDs, guys. So if you're new to the channel, we do a quite a bit of DVD sales. Um, very easy to ship off, a very good beginner-friendly uh, category to get into. Um, these are a couple of the other ones that we had from, from Friday. Um, we did sell a very large, big uh, bundle of PlayStation 3 games. This was a large allotment that we had done all of the, the pricing. Um, you know, we'd split out all the price points that I was talking about before. And uh, I found a big stack of 31 that I didn't want to list individually and they sold instantly for $100. Uh, so that was just incredible. Um, we did sell Party of Five as well. Party of Five sold, even though it was a Region 1 and a Region 4, a bit of a mixture. Um, but we got a $50 sale price on that one there, so I thought that was excellent. Um, I actually sold this video game bundle, which was a mixture of different, you know, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PlayStation 2. I just thought, you know what? Let's just go ahead and list it up for a video game store, for instance. They might like to buy that. $3 a piece. I listed it for $49.95. And again, just like this, it sold in the space of about 30 minutes and I took a best offer at $45. So that's really good too. Even different you know, different consoles can go on to sell well. Uh, and then this one sold to the UK. I've got Star Wars, Dark Forces. I think it was like a $35 odd dollar sale price, or maybe 25, uh, but I got $35 worth of postage off to the UK, so that was pretty good. Um, this one sat in store for about a year, <laughs> maybe even longer. I actually thought they were a nice pair of shoes when I first grabbed them. I just thought somebody might like all the different colours. Uh, but they only sold for 20 bucks. Uh, but I did get international postage as well. These are going to go to America um, for an extra $20 in postage. So $40 worth of total revenue. Uh, it should cost about $25, I think, to get these off to the States. Um, so it makes it a $15 sale price. Not going to make pretty much any profit on those. But considering they've been in store for such a long time, it's good to see them get out of there, right? Um, so yeah, a few extra bits and pieces there that I looked out the other day, but getting back to our list, um, what else? We had Outrun, I grabbed that. This one here is yet to sell. Chris, if you could hurry up and make your payment, that'd be great. Uh, $18, Mafia 3, it was a price drop on Friday, and we had the sale come through, which was good. Um, all right, so this one here, we're gonna go into custom label number 27. Divergent series on Blu-ray. We got a 28, uh, 28.45 sale price on that. So that would have been a best offer acceptance. Um, Blu-rays do quite well. I do want to try and find a few more of them. Um, quite quite hard to find, I guess. Here it is here. Tub number 27. Um, so yeah, like I said, majority of what we do is DVDs. But uh, every now and again, you'll get some Blu-rays that come through the store. And they do quite well, so... Just have to look him out. Divergent series. There it is. Lovely. Put him up there for now. Don't fall, don't fall. Put him up there. Cool. I'm missing Courtney, guys. I've only got one hand in here. And I don't own a GoPro, if any of you guys are wondering. Uh, so there it is there. Three of the Divergent series. A bit of a collection, the Divergent series. Um, we'll put that into a small satchel, $28.45, plus about $8.50 worth of shipping. Sorry, I forgot. Can you quieten it down out there? All right. Um, so yeah, Divergent, what else? 
Uh, oh, here we go. Yeah, another one that I dropped the price of. I actually dropped this from 20 down to 15. And I could have almost put this one here. There it is there, Metal Gear Solid. I could have almost put that one into the donation pile and given it away for $3. Um, but I chose to list it individually for one last crack. And uh, yeah, we got the sale for 15 bucks. So Metal Gear Solid 5 on the PlayStation 4. There it is. Beautiful. 15 bucks for that one there, which is definitely more so true market value. So skew tub here, number 43. Dead gorgeous. Of course, I'm not going to leave it on top here for me. There it is. Dead gorgeous volume number one and two. Not sure if they do any more volumes than this. Just a volume one and two collection there, dead gorgeous. Haven't sold it before, so it's nice to see the rubber get a $29.95 sale price. That's um that's quite generous. Now, based on the, the large uh, envelope price points, I'm actually putting the two DVDs now into a small satchel rate. Um, so we're going to ship this off for about $8.50. Um, so it's going to be another small satchel. And as I go, I like to towel these up how we're going to ship them off just to make life easier. So I'm going to put that little towel sack there because that's going to be small satchels. They're all going to be boxes. That's going to be a box as well. That one is international, but it will go into a small satchel. And that's going to be the start of our mediums. And that's going to be, obviously, all of our envelopes. So it just makes the process of collating all of these sales a little bit easier for us when we get to the shipping stage. Um, all right, look at this, guys. Another game. Another game is sold for $24.95. It just motivates me to go ahead and just do the rest of the room now that I've started to see these sales come through. Just a little bit of extra work. It's not the fun stuff. You know, it's not going out to the thrift and finding new items. It's going, hold on a minute. I've got 1,200 items in here, and if I just change the price of them, I might actually pick up some sales. And sure enough, that's exactly what's happening to us this weekend. It's been a very, very big eye-opener. Now, a DVD here that I found at a Cash Converters. Uh, we've sold it for 20 bucks, 19.95. I paid $2 for it. It's in number 62. Uh, we've got volume 12 of Sailor Moon. So 62 is over on this side. There it is right there. Tub number 62. Sailor Moon. Used to love this show. Uh, where is it? Oh, man, why? Why are you making life hard for me? If only it could just be sitting on here. There it is. Got lucky again. All right. Sailor Moon, volume 12, and there it is there. Cash converters. Definitely did not pay $15. I can tell you that right now. Cash is actually... Um, stopped doing dvds a while back and when that happened uh they dropped all of their dvd price points down to like 50 cents or a dollar a piece so i would have paid well i said two dollars on my skew but i actually think it might have been a bit less than that i think it might have been about 50 cents so you know to turn it into 20 bucks it's like i said the lowest price point we like to do for dvds and video games but we'll put it into another envelope that won't be too bad at all um Another game, another game that we reduced the price of, guys. 20 bucks. Uh, this one was bought on the 22nd of May. So it's been up for a little bit. Sonic All Stars on the Wii U. Actually, Wii U, we haven't actually got to yet. There it is there. So nice to see that one sell. I'm pretty sure that was it, wasn't it? Special edition Sonic All Stars Racing. Yeah, that is a match. That's a little step you want to do as well, guys. Just make sure you are getting the right game. There's a lot of Sonic games that we're selling, so we want to make sure we're selling the right ones. Uh, next up, uh, another game. Look at this. Ridiculous stuff. $24.95, Tekken 5. I did manipulate this one uh, up here. Um, Tekken 5. There it is. Tech 5, ripping game. Actually, okay, interesting one with this one when we were doing the pricing. This one wasn't even listed, which is the other part of the process of going through all of your stock and doing a bit of a stock take. This one literally wasn't even listed and then I listed it up and sold it in the space of just a couple of hours. Um, the reason why it wasn't listed is because I would have bought that game a long, long time ago and uh, I literally did nothing with it and eBay would have deleted it off the store, which can, it, it can happen. Um, and that sucks when it does because eBay doesn't let you know. Uh, now, this is a big one. This is a big one. $149.95, we sold NCIS number one to 17. And that one's in number 52, um, which is, 
right here. Very, very big TV series, guys. I think there is 18 seasons with NCIS. Hold on. I'm just going to put that on. Oh, no, I can grab all that. Great. So it was that. Uh, there was two there. Going to have to count these up and make sure I'm not missing any. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. There's one more. We sold 17 seasons. There it is. Nice one. NCIS. A stomper of a TV show. Uh, because there are 17 seasons here, guys, I'm going to go ahead and put that one into a box. So it may fit into one of these. By the looks of it, it might not. Um, so I'm probably going to have to go to Bunnings. It's 32 degrees. I don't want to go outside, but it looks like I'm going to have to. All right. Minecraft. $30. A repeat buyer. Tara, if you're a viewer of the channel, thank you very much. If you are ever a viewer and you do ever buy anything uh, out of the store, please put a little note in the uh in the sale so i know that it's a viewer purchase but uh, minecraft on the playstation 4 sold for 30 dollars uh it was a manipulation and there it is right there good stuff now the way that i've done my skewing is as you can see there i don't have a skew number like a tub number um but i know with all of that that that's just going to obviously be sitting on that bookshelf video games um this one here is a dvd box set um, so it's seasons one, two, three, four, no five, and then we added in season number six, uh, a place to call home. There's no skew, no information. So it sold for twenty eight dollars, but I know that it's over here on our on our um basically our uh, box set DVD case. We'd like to fill this up with a few more because we're actually starting to put action figures and consoles in because we're not selling, or we're not actually not finding and sourcing as many of the uh, of the box sets as we'd like, but. Here it is here, season six of A Place to Call Home. Um, just wish we had season five. This one might have sold a bit sooner. Uh, but we found this in a thrift store, um, season one to four. And then like I always say, along the journey, you find additional seasons. And we did find this one here, season six. So we went ahead and manipulated the listing. Um, that's obviously what's helped the sale price, being season six is the last season of this show. Um, but if we still had it for sale and we found season five, uh, obviously, we'll manipulate it even more so to strengthen it up even more so. But that should fit into a small satchel, I would say. So I'm just going to sit him right there. There it is there, Sonic Colors Ultimate. A lot of envelopes going out today, which is always nice and easy. Uh, we sold a car from about a year ago. Look at that, Toyota RAV4. Now, let's have a look. Oh, God, I don't think I skewed that, did I? A1. Damn it, that was something we had upstairs a long, long time ago. It's actually not referencing, but I think from memory, it's in a, it's in one of these bags. Now nah, some Digimon. If you guys are ever looking for little action figures to sell, these little Digimons do actually really, really well. Um, we've sold quite a lot of them. But anyway, that's not what we're looking for, is it? not there but I, I do think it's in one of these maybe this one this sounds sounds about right yeah all these cars that we've got cars and buses and there it is the toyota rav4 somebody actually messaged me about this and they said have you got more rav4s up for sale i said no i don't and they said would, would, do you think you'd be able to find more rav4s i said i don't know i have no idea Keep checking the store. Um, but yeah, this one was only a $16 sale price, so we're gonna wrap it up in a box, uh, put some butcher's paper around it, and it will go for an $8.50 sale price, uh, I dare say. So again, it's been in the store for over a year, so I'm just happy to see it go. Uh, this is another nasty one as well. Just a, whoa, hold on a minute. We got a $43 worth of revenue here, so this one's off to, international um we bought it for six dollars uh yeah the only issue i've got is i don't have a skew number but i do have clothing over here i'm just gonna have to probably jump into these i've only got three clothing tubs so any mini miny mo uh i'm gonna say it's in this one yep spot on there it is there so Gold Coast Suns, uh, it's genuine because it says AFL on field on the tag. So if you are looking for sort of sports related AFL clothing, um, that's going to be a tag you want to be finding. But it is just a tank top 
$18 sale price helped out on the fact that we're going to send it off to Canada. Uh, yeah, look, I only pretty much dabble nowadays uh, in, in sports gear. I just listed this up if anybody's interested. Um, I'm putting it up for $60. This is an old Boston Bruins hockey jersey uh, that I had for a fancy dress party. And um, yeah, bought it online, wore it a couple of times on a few beers. No stains, but it is a pretty sick jersey. So that's actually in store if anybody wants it. Um, I'll do it for 50 bucks if anybody wants it um, off eBay. Um, just give me a bank transfer and I'll put it in the post for you for 50 bucks shipped. Um, but yeah, I mean, I picked up that the other day at the flea market. A lot of watches on that one as well. Sydney Swans jersey. So all this stuff here I know is old because it's not sports gear uh, and it's not selling. So I'm sort of not buying that stuff anymore. Uh, I'm just buying the sports gear and like you saw with the Suns t-shirt, sell them well. Now, this one was a really, really cool talking point. Okay, so tie number two and number three. Thanks again, Ian, for being a repeat buyer. We got a $50 sale price in the space of a couple of hours. Um, tie three is a really rare game, okay? So let me go and find these first of all. Tie and tie tie and tie there it is perfect okay so tie the tasmanian tiger this one is just game number one and this one's game number two and when i was going through the shelves and looking into the price points of everything i realized when i searched up tie initially that there were some really crazy comps going for like 60 70 80 odd dollars um, but it was actually tie three and I looked at the game, I looked at the fact that it was case and manual, tie two was going for about $20. And then I opened this up and look at that. We actually have tie three worth of a game disc hiding inside an original tie uh, game cover. So this was a bit of an oversight on Courtney's part. She didn't actually check to see what game was in it. And if she did check, she would have priced this up for a whole lot more than it was originally. So what I did was I went, you know what, if we're trying to sell these two games individually, let's just put them together and we'll stipulate that we're selling tie three and tie two, as you've seen there. I went tie two plus tie three and I actually put in the code word Knight of the Quinken, whatever that is, um, because that's what the tie three game is. This one's the Tasmanian Bush Rescue. Um, but this one here is, you can see it there, Knight of the Quinken. Um, so I put that in the search bar and that got a lot of traction. And the fact that the game, if it was complete, um, tie three, sells for about 60, 70, 80, as I mentioned, I figured I'd get a really quick sale if I went 50 bucks on these two. Now we've had these listed up in store on this DVD, on this video game rack for ages. So I was like, all right, 50 bucks, let's just see how it goes. And then bang, we get a weekend sale. So that was a really interesting sale, I thought, and it was nice to see a big $50 pineapple come through as well. Oops, I shouldn't put that there. I should put that there on the small satchel stack. Game of Thrones is up next. We're going to go to tub number 58. Uh, now, this one here is seasons one, two, three, and seven. That will go into a small satchel as well. And I just want to triple check. 1895, we've got The Legend of Spyro, Dawn of the Dragon on the Nintendo Wii. Um, Legend of Spyro. Uh, there it is. Beautiful. Nice and easy. Uh, Dante's Cove, the third season, just a one season of this show. We got 20 bucks for it, which is quite good. Uh, it is in B3. Oh, my God, B3. That might mean we don't even have it. And then there's Party of Five, which we're overdue on because of Friday being a public holiday. So that's the last of what we need to collect. Dante's Cove, though, is, is a concern with the B3 skew because I don't know if we've actually got that one. So I might have to let the buyer know. I might have to let the buyer know that I don't have it. I will do, do a bit of a dig around, but I'm just going to say here on camera that we don't have this one. I'm going to message the buyer and let them know. Good news. Thank you very much, Chris. Uh, he must have heard me giving him a yell. $18 has just come through for the steelbook of Mafia number three. There it is up there. Bloody beautiful. 
All right, so my job now is to go through and ship off what was the weekend sales. So as you can see there, there's a good 22 odd sales that we've got to pick out, which we've obviously gone ahead and done, but we've got to now put them into the mailbag and get them off to the post office. My garment is dead, which is a concern, um, but this will all be out within the next hour, uh, I dare say, which will be, making us get there before five o'clock. Five o'clock is when the post office closes. The postage runs at 3 p.m. Um, so I think we might miss the 3 p.m. for this lot, but at least it will get to the post office today. It's the best we can do in uh, what's well, been a tricky old process um, getting out of Melbourne. It is currently uh, something like quarter to three. So I've only got two hours left. I'm going to go buy some uh, butcher's paper. I've got to buy some bubble wrap to do the post. And I've actually got to buy some medium track post envelopes as well because I've only got three and we need 11 with all of those sales. So I'm jumping back into the 30, what set, my car says 36 degrees. We're only two days out of winter and it's saying 36 degrees in the car. And I've just come from Melbourne where Melbourne was like 13 degrees um, and really windy. So I just felt colder than 13. 13 is colder enough, don't get me wrong, but uh, 31 was the forecast for today, but the car's saying right now 36. Yeah, I think throughout the rest of today, I might actually, rather than going out and doing any thrifting with a really limited amount of time, I might actually do some some more of that price point. I might try and reprice a few of the items on the shelf today, and I might even just turn the camera on and just methodically go through it with you as well, um, because it is incredibly powerful from what I've seen over the weekend while I was away in Melbourne to have all of those games go on to sell. It was really cool to see. Um, so it just has motivated me one, to document it on camera and tell you guys to go and do the same thing with your own store. Um, but two, when Courtney comes back on Wednesday, uh, I'm going to get her to just charge away at sh probably the shoe category, I think, because I really do think for a long time there, I was pricing my shoes up for like 50, 60 odd dollars, and I think a lot of them are actually only worth about $30. I just had this in my mind for so long growing, you know, growing in the early stages of, of eBay that you could get 50 bucks for a pair of shoes. Um, terrible mindset because you've got to do everything on a case-by-case -case basis as we know um, so if, uh, for that reason I just think there's a lot of shoes that we don't have priced up correctly and I think if we do reprice them the category is still a really good one to be selling on eBay uh, I just think that we're, we're pricing ourselves out of the opportunity to make sales um, so yeah I'm gonna go and grab all this stuff to finish off the post and then I'll show you some some comp research and some repricing and have a bit, bit of a chat about those now the example that I'm going to be using here is Star Wars on the Game Boy. This is arguably going to be the most important information in this video, guys. So thank you for still being here. I know it's a long video, but this is super, super important stuff that is going to drastically help your eBay business. As you've seen from the What Sold segment, we've been able to sell so many of these items that we've been able to tinker with. So I've got this screen here record and on the screen record, what I want to do is firstly take you through some of the filters that I've got set up with the eBay app that is going to be crucial to working out exactly what the market value is. Um, the first thing here is I'm doing used as a filter because, well, we're searching used games. If you've got a brand new product, put your filter on as new to get an accurate look. I'm only doing Australia only. So basically, I'm only working within my market. If you're in America watching this or maybe the UK, um, just set it up as America only or the UK only. Um, so for me, it's going to be Australia. And then I've got sold listings, obviously. I want to see what's sold. And then the final step is I'm making sure that I'm searching via the highest price first. Please make sure that you set up all of those filters. Um, the condition as well is probably the only other one that we need to talk about. And for me, I want to make sure that this is used condition. Oh no, we said that. My bad. Um, okay, I've done a list here for Star Wars Game Boy. There it is there, Star Wars Game Boy. This is the game that I'm looking for, but I'm not seeing it right now. For some weird reason, The Simpsons Treehouse of Horror has come up in this search. So that's a bit weird. We're going to ignore that. We're going to keep moving down. I'm going to get past. That one there has a Game Boy with the game and it sold for 107 on bid. So I'm, it's, it's just something that I'm going to ignore. I'm going to work my way down until I just simply find the game on its own. And there it is there. $45. That is the exact match of the game that we have here. So 45 bucks, that is the top selling price for this game on eBay in the last 90 days. Uh, this one's going for about $37. Uh, with postage, so I'll always add up postage plus. Okay, this one here is 35, but it has its manual along with it. Uh, let's have a look. There were 54 search results for this game. 
Um, there's another one there at 27. There's another one there at 26. And then a 22 on best offer, a 22, a 17. You can start to see that there's a lot more starting to pop up. 1995, 1988. So it looks as though starting to get into the lower end stuff. It looks as though $20 was more common. As you can see there, there's a 20, a 20, a 20, 22, 22, yeah. So I think if we were to price it up for 22, we would be more mid-range with our price points. There's obviously some outliers in there, uh, but maybe even maybe even 24.95 would be a good one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go across here and I'm gonna type in Star Wars Game Boy, I'm going to find my listing out of all of my listings. And there it is there. And as you can see, I like the title. Star Wars Nintendo Game Boy Color Game Tested Working Free Postage. Don't really need free postage, but at least that's in there. Um, everything else is in there. We've got ours priced up for 30 bucks. And that is exactly why this game is not sold. We've had this game in our store for so long and you can, you can tell by what we were doing before. It's unfortunate. And look, eBay will give you a median sold price of $37.20. So if you're trying to work off that median sold price, forget about it. It's so inaccurate. Um, so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to price this game up for $23. We're going to put $23 bucks on it. So we're not, we're not the best. We're not the worst, we're in the middle, we're ready to accept a best offer of $20, which is likely to come through. Um, and that change right there on that game, I don't think I need to, look at that, we only had three views and zero watches. So, you know, dropping that price from 30 to 23, I think we'll see some sales start to come through for this game. Um, it's been in there for way too long, I've got a bunch of other games. Um, there's a lot of Game Boy Advance games, as you can see right there, that I need to work through. So. It's not that much of a convoluted process to do this step. Um, you, you saw it on camera there. It's taken us three minutes to be able to do that and show you that step. But if you went ahead and did that for every single one of your eBay listings and brought your price points into true market value, you would have so much more success. You would get your sell-through rate from one listing, uh, one sale for every 100 listings. You'd be much more efficient with your store. I think a lot of the times we go ahead and we put price points in and then we, ne we neglect to go back and reference the price points every six months or so. Markets change in every single category that we try to sell. This Star Wars game could have been worth maybe six to 12 months ago, the $30 that we initially listed it up for. But over time, the market has changed and it's now only worth 20. Um, so unfortunately, we need to adapt to that and we need to make sure that we're going back in and checking our price points for all of our listings. You can see why I only want to have a thousand items in my store. Anything more than that, being a one-person band, to keep on top of all these price changes is just going to be way too much work if I've got two, three, four, five thousand items in my store. That would be a massive headache and I don't want that. I just want a really well-run, efficient store, listing 10, selling 10, getting a $40 average sale price and... Uh, making sure my price points are dialed in so the sell-through rate can be high, right? So hopefully that right there, I'll only do the one example for you guys because you just go on repeat after that. Um, hopefully that has allowed you some useful information to be able to go and do it for your own store. Um, what I will say is that we've got 31,400 YouTube subscribers. The GWS Giants in the AFL, they've got 33,000 subscribers. Now I'm trying to, well members I should say. I used to work in membership in the AFL so I know all about the process of trying to grow a membership base in AFL football and I would really love to knock these guys over. Get rid of GWS and then work our way up the membership tally to hopefully knock over Collingwood who have got 106,000 members at their football club. So 31,400 subs. If you're still here watching now, we're a good 40 minutes into this video. You're eligible. You're ready to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. So please go ahead and do so. Let's run these numbers up, guys. But I really do appreciate you sitting through and watching all of this video. I'm hoping that there's just a lot of useful information in there to help you with your own eBay business. And I'm going to leave you with this video right here, which is a big one, uh, another long one but hopefully you can enjoy it as well. Thanks for being here, guys. We'll see you soon.